Gemma is a school teacher. She's a very smiley young woman, dressed in her own casual style. She loves children and she seems to be enjoying working with them and they love her back. After the lesson is over, one of the moms walks up to Gemma and the first and only thing she wants to know is Hey! How's the house hunting going? How's the house hunting been going? This mom is strangely very curious about Gemma's personal life. She really wants Gemma to settle down, buy a house, and pay mortgage like she probably does, and like everyone else she knows does. Then, when Gemma does buy a house, she will let Gemma know that now's time to have children, and then a second child, and so on. It's like the voice of society in the face of this woman. Also notice how she reached out her hand to Gemma and then placed it on Gemma's arm. A very parental gesture. She wants to establish straight away that she's in control. Yeah, uh, it's okay. I mean, it's just been going on and on. Gemma was not ready for this question. I think she was expecting some small talk or questions about her daughter's performance at school, but the woman surprised her with this house hunting question and Gemma gave her sincere reaction, which is to frown and make a face that we usually make when we don't want to do something or when we remember some unpleasant experience connected with that and we don't want to talk about it. Actually, her face expression reminds me of a child who doesn't want to eat porridge in the morning. That's the face I still make when I'm offered buckwheat. I absolutely hate buckwheat with all my heart. Probably just like Gemma doesn't like talking and thinking about buying her forever house. Then she makes her explaining face. She feels obliged to explain herself because she understands what society wants from her, what her parents want from her, and she also knows that she doesn't want all of that. At least not now. But standing against societal pressure is not easy, and she hasn't yet learned how to grow a thicker skin and live the way she and not everyone else wants. I'll take my advice. Pants down. Market's going through the roof. Yeah, we're gonna drop into state agents later, so... Well, don't get left behind, Gemma. <laughs> okay, bye. Well, don't get behind, Gemma, the woman says, as if she's Gemma's mother. Her face is very expressive. Are you out of your mind, Gemma? Don't you know that time is actually running out? You're almost 30, Gemma. So you better go and make a life-changing decision to take out a mortgage because I tell you to do so and because it's what people do. That's what she's actually saying. Don't we all have people in our lives that always seem to rush us into something? Be it marriage, kids or a steady job. As if it's any of their business. It may seem like a harmless everyday interaction, small talk, socializing, but it has many things underneath that actually affect us. And many of us often feel the need to justify ourselves, like in Gemma's case here. She starts to explain herself, promising that they're going to the real estate agency right now. Gemma is giving this woman her widest smile, but it's a forced smile. People usually make a smile like this when they want to get away from someone as fast as they can. Her eyes are not smiling. This image shows it best. It even looks a bit creepy. Compare it to the smile she gives to her boyfriend. Her face is the proof that the interaction they just had was not pleasant for Gemma. This woman made her feel like a child who needs to act according to the rules. She felt uncomfortable. If both of them treated one another as equals, then it would be a respectful conversation of two adults. But when someone starts giving you unsolicited advice, it's a sign that they don't respect you, that they think you are less of a person than them. Maybe you've heard from people that it's wise to take other people's advice and that people who give you unsolicited advice actually mean well and they want to help you, they want the best for you. That's not true. Giving you unsolicited advice makes them feel superior and makes them feel really good and they are simply using you to satisfy their needs. However, most people do that unconsciously, without realizing that they do it, not intentionally. 
Here they say goodbye, and the woman is so pleased, she even closes her eyes. Sure, she has just satisfied her need to control another person. She now feels good about herself. Gemma smiled out of politeness and felt relieved that she got away from the woman so fast. Of course, it's no big deal if you have similar interactions from time to time. But since it's a film, there are no extra scenes. And the reason the film starts with this scene specifically is because Gemma's life is full of these little moments when people are giving her unsolicited advice, when she's always defending herself and explaining herself. She looks up at the tree to see Tom, her boyfriend. It's funny because in real life she always looks down on him. It's like Tom's always trying to climb up higher, but keeps falling in his girlfriend's eyes. Did right. you knock them down? No, I did not knock them down. I'm a professional. Come on, how dare you? Professional weirdo. Yeah, but professional. Professional. She's always jokingly bringing him down. I'm gonna get my own wheels one day. Tom doesn't have a car. It must be very inconvenient for a gardener not to have his own vehicle and carry all his tools with him. He brings up this topic, so it's probably bothering him, and he feels guilty for throwing his tools in his girlfriend's car. But he doesn't seem to do anything about it. Just you wait, I'm gonna have like a big, you know, muddy gardener's van. Sounds delightful. Yeah. The way Gemma reacted proves that it's been a while since she's been driving him to and from work. Maybe he doesn't really need a car that much, since his girlfriend always gives him lifts. Are you gonna change your t-shirt? What? He's so hurt and embarrassed in this shot. She's not being nice to him in this scene. Probably no one likes to hear that he or she smells. Seriously? Yeah. Shit. Mistake. Gemma, I'm sorry, but did you forget that your boyfriend is a gardener? Of course he's going to smell. If Gemma planned on going somewhere straight after his shift, that's not a good idea because she could have easily predicted that Tom would need a shower. But maybe on some level Gemma created this situation to find another way to hurt him. Maybe she didn't even plan on going to the agency, but decided to go on the spot after meeting that school mom earlier. They're entering the agency and if we listen carefully, we can overhear their conversation. From this conversation, we find out a few very important details. Your mom is the fender too. She's hardly over there. She's there all the time. Well, she came with the apartment. <laughs> yeah. Number one, Gemma's parents don't like Tom, or at least Tom gets the impression that they don't fancy him. Number two, Tom and Gemma are living in Gemma's parents' apartment. Number three. Tom is not very respectful of Gemma's mother. He's there all the time. How dare he complain about Gemma's mom being home all the time? It's her home, and she has the right to be there whenever she wants. Unlike you, Tom, you should get your own place to live, where you can invite your girlfriend to live with you. Number four, Gemma is also not very respectful of her mother. Well, she came with the apartment. This phrase, even in a joking manner, is very cruel. She came with the apartment, as if her mom is a piece of furniture. Of course, she intended to hurt Tom with this remark by reminding him that he's the one living on his girlfriend's territory. But while doing so, she also hurt her mom. We're just um, looking yeah. for something. We're just looking for something, says Gemma. You see, again, she's explaining and justifying herself even before she's asked, although she doesn't have to say anything. Her intonation screams insecurity and indecision, discomfort. And Tom is the same. He always agrees with her. Yeah, for something. Where's it located? Near enough. And far enough. Just the right distance. We can see by their faces that they are surprised by the force of this salesman's approach, but do nothing to let him know how they feel. It's not exactly what we're looking for, but um, it's worth, worth a look. The salesman even finishes the sentence for Gemma, and she feels bad for rejecting him, even though that's exactly what she wants and needs to do in this moment. 
Do you have a vehicle? Oh, shit. Unfortunately. Yes, we do outside. Tom wants to save the day by lying to the salesman. Notice how he chooses to lie instead of simply refusing the offer, simply saying, no, thank you, we're not interested. It's easier for him to lie and explain why they can't go with him and have a look at the house, than to refuse openly. Yes, we do outside. Gemma is happy to disagree with her boyfriend, revealing his lie. She's acting as if they're not on the same team, as if she's the leader and he should follow. He made a mistake by lying to get them out of the situation they didn't want to be in, but she didn't make it any better by disagreeing with him. At least, when he tried to lie, he attempted to rescue the situation because neither of them wanted to go with that weird guy. Gemma seems to be enjoying this game of being the better one of the two of them, and jumps at every opportunity to do this. It's not exactly what we're looking for, but... um. This is a futile attempt to escape this unpleasant situation. Gemma, you should sound more confident if you want to refuse. Acting this way, she's only adding fuel to the fire, and this salesman feels more and more confident about selling them something that they don't even want for free. To Martin, the salesman, her words sound like she's refusing a present out of politeness. You know how people do that when they refuse a present? Oh, I can't accept your present. Oh, you shouldn't have. But then they accept it anyways. If people don't take your no seriously, remember this example. Ask yourself, do you sound like you're refusing a present just to be polite, to look like a humble person? If you want the other person to take your refusal seriously, sound confident. No need to be rude. Just say clearly and with confidence, no. Thank you. It's worth a look. How can he do that to me? Too bad I have no boundaries and I can't say no. How disrespectful of him to be making me do this? She must be thinking in this moment. Unlike Tom, she's not enjoying this. You see how she has these situations just keep on occurring in her life over and over again. Her face here says it all. But she will agree to whatever this salesman has to offer, because she has no willpower to say no. I'll get my keys, you can follow me. Tom doesn't want to go, and neither does Gemma, but all he can do to protest is utter <sighs> and look at his girlfriend for support. She is the one making decisions for them. But as we know, Gemma's boundaries are very flexible. Jesus, Martin, you are one strange and persuasive motherfucker. He's so persuasive, says Tom, as if explaining why he can't say no to him. But it doesn't matter if he is persuasive or not. You should stand your ground and say no if you feel like saying no. But Tom kind of likes following the lead. Maybe that's why he's with Gemma. In his eyes, we can see that he enjoys the situation. Like a kid in class who likes watching when someone else gets into trouble. Only now he's actually getting into trouble himself. And that's what we'll see unfold very soon. Ready. Yeah, ready. Ready. Ready, ready. Like children in Gemma's class. They drive to the place and there is a song playing in Gemma's car called A Message to You, Rudy, by the band The Specials. You can read the lyrics on the screen right now. It's like a message to them to stop being children and grow up, but it can have two different meanings. What society wants from them is to get a house, have a child, etc., etc. But what they really need is to simply move out of Gemma's parents' apartment and become their own independent couple and sort out their own issues because they have a few. Gemma needs to work on building and protecting her boundaries, on being less critical of Tom, and Tom needs to be more independent and confident, get the car that he wants so bad, and just start from there. Because once they have this house payment, they are going to be mostly thinking about that, and this will only add stress to their lives. I think it's like with your first car, you get a cheap one to practice, and then you upgrade later. The same with adult life. If now they are living with Gemma's parents, 
Firstly, they should move out and rent, and then maybe get their own apartment. Their faces as they arrive say it all. They're so excited to see this house. Do you have children? No, and not yet. She says no and then quickly adds, and not yet. Not yet is a very tricky phrase. I'm also guilty of saying the same thing. And only recently I've realized that it stems from my deep-rooted people-pleasing trait. This not yet, actually, if I'm honest with myself, translates as, but don't worry, I'll have children one day. I, I do want them, I do. Even though I personally do want children, I don't have to explain this to anyone, especially to those who ask this not always a very appropriate question. Do you have children? No, and not yet. So in this scene, we actually see how Gemma again can't give a definitive no. Tom can't answer anything himself. He always looks at Gemma first. Obviously, Gemma is the decision maker in their family. It's nice here. Mm -hmm. If you want to live here, it's a lot of space. Martin? Martin? Hello? Nope. Once Martin gives them a complete tour of the house, he disappears and they're on their own. It's like a metaphor for adult life. Society wants you to do many things, but once you do them, no one is there to help you. And the only one you can blame for all that's happening to you is yourself. Why did you do that? Didn't you know that there are consequences of your actions? But now you're alone with your problems. Just like them in this cartoonish house where there's everything they need for life, but only one problem. They don't want to live there. It's nice here. Mm -hmm. If you want to live here. Mm -hmm. If you want to live here. It's a lot of but who's to blame? Who forced Gemma to promise the school mom? Yeah, we're going to drop into estate agents later, so... Who didn't want to drive to yonder? It's not exactly what we're looking for, but... But gave in to the persuasive salesman and went anyways. Ooh, ready. Yeah, ready. Ready. Like I predicted in the beginning, now society wants them to raise a baby and then they will be free. But that's not going to happen. Raising a baby is a whole life in itself. And you can never stop being a parent. In the end, they quote-unquote, raise another Martin. What the fuck? What do you want? We fed you! Having a child only escalates their already existing problems. Shifting the blame from one to another, yeah, well, maybe, Gemma, if you didn't say no to every other goddamn house we looked at, we wouldn't have ended up here. So I'm to blame? How is this my fault, Tom? Not being able to take responsibility. What am I supposed to do with that? Tom still has no authority in their family. He smokes secretly when Gemma doesn't see him. His decisions are not respected. Tom! Gemma! Stay! He literally digs his own grave for himself. Gemma is still insecure, can't say no even to a child, doesn't create any rules for the child, teams up with the child, making her husband the villain. The child grows up with no respect for his parents and thinks of them as disposable objects. This literally is being shown in the film. You are a mother. A mother? Yes. Someone who prepares her son for the world. He never saw any love and care because his parents didn't want him. 
because his parents weren't mature enough to sort out their own issues between themselves and he absorbed everything like a sponge. And he is now the one who will trick people into buying those homes. And the circle goes on and on until someone stops it. Let's hope it'll be us. So what are your thoughts on this film? I think it's a great metaphor and an amazing learning material for us. Let me know in the comments which idea from this video was the most useful for you. Also, if this topic resonated with you, you can watch my video analysis of the movie Mother, a 2017 film with Jennifer Lawrence. It can be very helpful for you if you're also struggling with saying no to people. Thank you for your attention! Until next time!